Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and you asked for it, I delivered. No fog, no sew, filter pocket, DIY mask, with a free downloadable pattern. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal sewing niche? This channel is for you. Hit subscribe to become a part of the community. For the nose piece, you will want to use some terry cloth or some fleece. For the binding that goes over the nose, you'll probably want to use a soft knit. All of these fabrics I do recommend as far as the main fabrics for them to be 100% cotton. Here's some pattern pieces that I cut out. Here's some elastic, quarter inch wide. All of these details are going to be on my blog with the free downloadable pat pattern. You will want some wire. This can be millinery wire. They also sell nose piece wire online now that you can get. And you're gonna need some silicone, not necessarily this kind. I'm actually not gonna re recommend a certain kind. Definitely do your homework on this. If you Google it, it appears that most silicones are pretty similar and pretty stable and that once they have cured, they're fairly safe. But I want you to do your homework on that. Also keep in mind that I think most likely the safest, although it may be a little more expensive, I don't know, uh, most likely the safest type of silicone for you to get is going to be the kind that you get from a supplier that helps uh, cosplayers or theater mask makers um, get their supplies. So you're going to be looking for um, a silicone that is made and tested for being worn against the face. I also have an excellent source of a type of silicone trim that you can use. But let's get to making this mask. Head and notch with these little pie shaped cuts. Uh, for every little tick mark that is around the outside of the pattern piece, that way I can mark the fabric. Those marks are gonna come in handy later when we need to pleat the front of the mask. This is the piece for the facing that covers the elastic. You're gonna cut two of those. The other large pieces, you're gonna cut one of each, and the pattern will have those instructions printed on them as well. Since this is a no-sew project, you're also going to need a high temp glue gun and high temp glue sticks. I just am using whatever I have in my workroom and you'll notice the glue sticks actually produce kind of an amber colored glue, but they do actually have crystal clear glue sticks. So you would probably prefer to have those. Just ignore the color of this glue. I don't use it very often. This is a sewing channel and I'm a sewing kind of girl. Let's just step on the gas and cut these out real quick, okay? See how I have this marked? We're gonna make little marks, just like those little lines, all around the edges of these. You can either notch them like we did, or you can just line them up like this and make lines. Each of those lines represents where we are going to cut, maybe about a quarter of an inch in, about as deep as those lines are long. We're gonna cut them in, and that's gonna be our relief in the fabric so that we can have a nice smooth fold when we press the edges of these pieces. We're gonna start by pressing in the sides that have the marks, and now we're going to press in the sides of the larger pieces. Each of these sides has seven little tick marks. Um, the top of the mask has three, the bottom has two, so the sides have seven, and we're gonna press in all those parts that have the seven. That way when we lay them together to form the mask, they're gonna lay neatly. Obviously, with this being a no-sew tutorial, there's probably better construction benefits to having it sewn. It's also better benefits for how you can clean it. If you were to have your mask sewn uh, by, say, a local seamster of yours, 
then you could wash it, you could dry it on high heat. It'd be much easier to keep it sanitary. With these, with them having been constructed with hot glue, you're not gonna be able to do any type of cleansing that is going to be particularly aggressive with the fabric or hot. So you're gonna be using more like rinsing with some type of disinfectant chemical and then allowing them to dry and possibly maybe even having several of these masks that you can rotate out. When you are able to get out, you can take this mask pattern or any of the other mask patterns that you find on my blog, take them to your local seamster and have them make something that can be washed and dried. The beauty of this, of course, is that you can swap out the filters that are inside, but you still need to keep the mask clean. In this segment of the video, I'm just gesturing where those tick marks are so that you can see that we are basically forming a little box pleat here. So you're gonna pinch those together and you're gonna press them like that. All this pressing work that you do right now is gonna make the construction of the mask so much easier later on. If you don't get these pleats just right, don't worry. Just take your time and try again. They also don't have to be perfect for the mask to work. Another component to this mask that you may like having, just to give it a little more stiffness and to keep it away from your mouth, is some horsehair braid. This is half inch nylon woven horsehair braid and it just puts some springiness and body into the front shape of the mask. If you don't have that, um, you can get it on Amazon. It's linked to on the products page of my website. You can find it at regular sewing supply stores. Also, some people uh, will cut a length of zip tie, just a, a nice flexible, lightweight length of zip tie, roll that up in some fabric, and also glue that into the front of the mask, and that's going to also allow it to kind of vault away and over from your mouth. Now, remember, I'm using a very high temp glue gun, so I'm not going to want to pinch this together with my bare hands right as soon as I put the glue on. After a couple seconds, as you can see, I can begin to kind of press on it. And it's okay if it doesn't take right away and springs loose or something like that. Um, the higher temp glue guns, all, they also take a little longer to cool than the low temp glue guns. So that gives you a little bit more time for workability. So I'm just rolling these ends in because the ends of the horsehair braid can be a little bit prickly and I don't want that to be irritating. So I'm kind of rolling them in and then we're going to glue this strip down the center front of the mask and we're putting it on the inside so that's the wrong side of the lining layer. So the lining layer is the one that has the two crescents cut out of the sides. So we're gonna glue that there now. Now we are going to hot glue each pleat, um, that is the top and the bottom on both of the main pattern pieces. We're going to glue them together. So that's going to be inside and out every which way and you're going to do it just along the outer edge of this pattern piece. You don't want to glue them together um, during for kind of like the middle front part of the mask. You want that part to be able to spring open. That's what gives you the curvature for your face. I know some of you are going to ask about my hands. Please do forgive me for the condition of my hands. I am indeed a full-time skilled laborer, so I do work with my hands and I understand they do look very rough. 
um, but they do their job and I'm thankful for them. Um, I also edit this the video footage to have high contrast so that you can more clearly see what I'm doing and that of course ages my hands and makes them look a lot rougher than they do in real life. So I apologize for that, but I'm not a hand model. I'm a seamstress. Now that we've gotten those plates squared away, let's work on this nose piece. So again, I am using millinery wire. Um, you can use pipe cleaners. You can also just buy nose pieces online now. Um, whatever you can find in your resourceful little mind to come up with that you think will be safe and will work. Uh, so we're going to just kind of lay it down in the middle of either that terry cloth or fleece, whichever you chose to use, uh, whichever you tend to have on hand. I personally choose the terry cloth for these demos because most people do have some old washcloths that they can cut up. So we just kind of roll it in there, smooge it all together so that it's nice and attached. And we're going to run this along the top side. Now the top side, you can see the pleat is a little wider up top. Remember, the top is the one that had the three tick, tick marks, not the two. So you're going to kind of round this piece out so that it flows with the arc of the top of this piece. And you can just bend it and make it go how it needs to go. There you go, just like that. And just make sure it just nests in there nicely. If you need to trim up your uh, nose padding piece just a little bit, go for it. Do what you need to do to make it fit in there um, nice and flush so it will be comfortable for you. Go ahead and run a nice narrow bead of the hot glue along this top edge. Now, if you are to glue a little far in or a little far out, that's okay. The hot glue is very forgiving. As you'll see in a little bit, um, I'm gonna have to kind of negotiate the way things are laying up at this top part a little later. Watch me struggle with that hot glue gun, will ya? <laughs> it's like a blooper. The thing fell over. I don't know, probably 10 times while I was making this video. Uh, but anyways, this is something that you can really work with and shape later. Um, and if you hot glue it and then it cools and sets and then later you come back and you start work with, working with it again and it's just not working, you can always soften it back up with a um, hair dryer or you can rub the hot tip of the hot glue gun along the cold glue and it will soften it a little bit so that you can move it and make it where you need it to be. So I am now gluing these right sides together. So I'm going to put the lining layer right along the edge of the outer shell layer of this mask and I'm just gonna kind of squeeze it together like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich get those together being super careful because this is a high temp glue gun that means if I get myself um, I'm gonna have a blister so I'm gonna put a little notch there right where they meet that's always going to land a little bit different for each time you make this. So don't be shy. Just make sure the notches align. And we're going to run another thin bead right along this edge. Again, a crystal clear hot glue will look much better than this amber colored glue. Nothing against all my ambers out there, my red-headed sisters. But um, yeah, so we're going to have to push this along here and just ignore the fact that it's got a little bit of color to it. And I just want these to be glued at the very edge. And you'll see later when I flip it, 
um, it, I, I kind of put a little bit too much glue up there at the nose piece area and I have to kind of negotiate with that here in a little bit. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with my channel, um, part of what I do here is when I have little mishaps and mistakes, I try to not edit them out as long as they don't take up too much of your viewing time. Because a big part of what we do as seamsters or crafters or whatever is um, we make these little mistakes and it's all in how do we recover, right? It's kind of like um, if you're in uh, training for vocal skills or dance or any other type of competitive thing, um, a lot of times you get scored on the recovery, right? So um, the problem solving that happens later is important. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this right side out and I'm letting that nose piece guide the way. That is the strongest piece and we're just going to kind of push it through and let it guide the way. And then I'm going to work with this to get it turned completely right side out. And it is definitely taking me a lot longer than it should because of how much I had used overuse the glue in the nose piece but we just worked it out and it's fine now there that looks so nice right okay so we need to work with these pieces that are going to be the facing for where our elastic attaches and just run another narrow little line of glue here if you're having a hard time with your glue gun, let's troubleshoot that for a second. So sometimes you find yourself having to pump the glue gun trigger a lot. Um, uh, if that's going on, you should maybe look into getting a longer glue stick and also make sure that your hot glue gun is plenty, plenty hot. So if your glue gun's a little cool, you're gonna have a hard time getting that stick to advance. Let's put the elastic in now. As you'll notice on the pattern piece, I like to use on average about 11 inches of elastic for the lower piece, about 13 inches of the one quarter inch wide elastic for the top piece. If the width of your elastic varies, uh, you may have to work with that length a little bit and adjust it. I do recommend just kind of gluing it on the one side, let that glue completely dry, cure, harden, and then try the mask on pulling the elastic around and make sure that the tension is going to be right for the wearer. If you do have to adjust it after you get it fully assembled, remember you can do the hairdryer to soften the glue so that you can kind of pry that apart and adjust the length of the elastic. Make sure before you glue it down on the other side also that you are just kind of rolling that elastic over in a nice neat little arch. You don't want to get it twisted or mixed up or anything like that. With this style, in order to get the zero fog on the lenses, fit is everything. You're going to want to make sure that this mask is very, very tight to your face. I'm sure um, we've all seen pictures of the doctors and nurses when they remove their N95 masks that it has left an imprint on their face. It is so tight. And that's the most common uh, wearing error that I see in the general public uh, when I need to go out and about to shop or whatnot. Um, many people are wearing their masks way too loose. So you want a nice seal and then you'll see how we're going to work with this nose piece up here to really give you that seal. But um, it's, it's not just the application that we're going to do on the nose piece, but it's also making sure that it fits very, very snugly. Actually, snugly is like a, a teddy bear, right? <laughs> we need to make sure it fits very, very snug. There you go. Let's move on to the nose piece. So I have folded the nose piece in half so that I could find that center point because I want that to align with the center of the pleat on my mask. And you can see how messy that nose piece is where I was talking about I got a little carried away with the glue. It's all fine. 
<laughs> it's going to work just fine. It looks terrible, but we'll live. So yes, those seams are not folded into each other super neatly, but that's really the ideal place to have that mistake uh, because we are going to have this nose binding um, around the edge that's going to make it nice and soft for our nose. This is important because of how tight we need to wear this mask. We need this to be uh, nice and, and cushioned and conformed to us. So we are spending a little bit more time on this mask design in the nose area than what I have spent on my other mask videos. And of course, you can find them on my channel. You can find them linked to in my blog. And I'll also put them up here in the upper right hand corner for you to uh, skip over to if you are interested in them at any point. So I basically just glued this top side and bottom and then I'm going to trim away any little messy corners or edges, round them off and make them look nice and neat. They will kind of be the focal point of the mask when you wear it. So if you're into some crafty decorative stitching or puffy paint or rhinestoning, whatever you want to do to rock this mask and make it your own. You may just want to do this along that nose piece. I've seen some very uh, cheerful, creative masks out there and just showing how um, the human spirit does always look for ways to create and find and appreciate beauty, even in some pretty rough times. So here's how that looks. I'm just gonna tidy it up for a minute and then we'll move on to the next part that's gonna seal it and prevent the fogging of your glasses. I will repeat that I'm using the silicone caulk for demo purposes only. I want you to do your own research. Some people online say silicone is silicone and it doesn't matter. Um, other people say that they prefer to use silicone that has been tested for use on the face. So you need to make sure that you use the correct product that is safest for you, your loved ones, your clientele. Just be super careful with that and very conscientious. The other product that I promised I would mention to you guys is one that was made to be worn directly against the skin and for an extended period of time. It is gripper elastic. It is a silicone coated elastic that can be sewn on or glued on. So you could also source that for use on your masks. I personally prefer this method. It just feels a little safer to me. Now what I'm doing is I've taken a little square of cardstock and I'm just kind of causing the silicone to ramp up from being fully smoothed to the cotton all the way to having the bead edge. So the rounded beaded edge is going to be the outer edge, the pointing up toward your glasses. The smoothed down part that is gonna be smoothed to be completely flush with the fabric is the part that's facing down your nose toward your mouth. So this way you can get a complete seal uh, when you have the elastic tight enough. Also, um, if this is a big problem for you, I have seen doctors and nurses actually put um, tape across their nose and cheeks. So when you have this seal plus the tape together, you can really get a good seal. Follow the directions on the safe silicone product for cure time, that is very important. And then notice your filter pocket. I personally use Filty filters at filty.com. That's F-I-L-T-I.com. Um, they are currently producing um, some N95 rated filtration fabric. And you can learn more about that in some of my other videos. They have been helping out millions of people in this terrible uh, time that we're in. 
Uh, and I hope that you do love their product, but that's where you can get some filter fabric that has been so far tested to be safe on faces. Final thing. Now, this is not just something we say, it's actually very important. Please take just one moment and hit that like button if you liked this video. And thanks for watching. Here comes my channel trailer to tell you more about what we usually do here at Bridal Sewing Techniques. I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools, the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.